Hey guys, and in this video we are going to disclose the final plan for our version 2 of our antivirus. Um, it will include uh, the, at least the basic features we're going to add, uh, the licensing agreement, uh, the structure, and when we're going to start. So, let's jump straight into it. First of all, let's talk about the license. Licensing is a somewhat important bit, um, I suppose. Um, it will be released under the Mozilla Public License version 1.1 again. Same version as the first load went out and under. So with that out of the way, this is the plan. This is the plan we ended up going for. So we're going to have a client running in the user's environment. We're going to have a service running in the um, local services. And attached to this, we are going to load a community engine, which is going to be pre-compiled and pre-written by me. And at the same time, we are going to build an engine straight into your service. So this way, you still get to develop the engine, but at the same time, I don't breach my contract. And in the interest of full disclosure, I do work for a startup, which is which is coding security software so you know so the short and narrow of it is um, the Thirktix community plugin which was written by uh, one of my colleagues Jack um, has now been given over to me um, unfortunately it's more workload for me because I have to program these videos ahead of you and then I have to program the community engine ahead of you guys but you know, we you do what you love. So, so that's the basic layout. Um, the client will talk to the service. The service will hold the engine, the quarantine system. Um, the majority of the workings will be in the service, and the client will simply be an interface for the user to talk to it. So this is the basic parts of the service. We have the public engine. Once again, we'll go through the exact same things we had in the last one, except from we will streamline them out quite considerably, as well as um, make some improvements. I haven't yet decided what the database system we're going to be using is. Um, we I might have to code one. Um, I was hoping to use SQL Lite, but I've had issues with that recently, so we might not be using that either. So once again, basic scan functions, we're going to be adding scanning processes. So that would be scanning the process memory and the file on the disk and comparing them. Really good way to uh, detect file injection. And in the community plugin, we will obviously have to code in a loading function that's going to either dynamically or statically load. I might do both and you can pick whichever one you want to use. But inside of the community plugin, we will have scan file, scan folder. We will have to have a callback function because you want your data back. Um, we will have a settings scan registry, uh, a much more advanced scan process. We'll have a community database. Um, so this will reach out to probably back to the Thirk Tech servers because I can't host it. And it will pull community database files out of a folder and that way you you stand a chance of keeping up without having the massive in infrastructure that we have behind us um, as well as I will make some community um, plugins which are visible so you'll be able to see what's in them um, we will also be adding automatic scanning so scheduled scanning comes with most antiviruses or all of them nowadays um, public database system so this will be a database system that is coded publicly public quarantine system and a public reporting system so in the same way the first version had all these features but they were all stuck in the client they will all be housed in a service this is done for two reasons one because each time the user logs in so if you had user a and user b logged in it would get loaded twice and loading databases into memory 
twice isn't a good idea. Um, uses up memory quite quickly. Not to mention the service will automatically start with Windows. So services are designed to automatically start and it can do things like reach out for new databases as it starts and that will keep you up to date um, even if say you don't you don't use the project for months or you start the project and you you stop and then you start again it'll be easy for you to stop the pro uh, stop the service from loading and then when you want to start again start the process back up and away it goes again um, as well as having the added feature that it's running in a higher privilege margin so it will have service privilege which means it can access not just your user files but the other users files um, the other users registry and your users registry as well as the fact that it can actually delete files which are in the systems folder hopefully not ones you need um, we might code in fail safes for that to stop you deleting things that are system critical um, but that's the service um, if there's any functions that aren't listed here that you would like to see if you chuck them in the description um, I will discuss them with the rest of my the rest of the team that I have to work with and if they're deemed as not competitive I suppose if they they deem that the project the, the product that I end up releasing does not become competitive with the one that I am paid to work on then they'll be added so this is the um, this is the client sorry I have to skip through my slides uh, I don't have the video already made so this is the client uh, this is just a rough mock-up um, I might change it I might move things around feel free for you guys to move them around um, in this model um, or in this design it wouldn't matter too much where the buttons are or things like that if you think they are more ergonomically situated in a certain place move them quite simply um, so we will set it so that the client will start with Windows so as the user logs in they will get a copy um, I don't know whether we're going to stick it in the toolbar or not yet we will see so the main idea of the client is to check statuses on the server the service and control the service so it will pretty much just be you know an interface there won't particularly be much functionality in the client um, there will be some functionality so loading reports will be in the client um, just because it's easy settings will also be in here this will include um, the ability to change some of the settings that are default loaded by the community plugin although I haven't started coding it yet so they will have to be added as we go along um, other than that that is pretty much it so we will be starting on or the first video will be released on uh, Sunday the 11th of February 2018 uh, I will do one video each Sunday exactly one week afterwards um, the upload time will vary on a Sunday depending on how long it took me to render the video and how much I have to cut the video and whether my internet is playing ball or not so they will always go up on a Sunday um, if you have any comments um, so features you'd like to see, features I might have missed out, um, you know, just stick them in the stick them in the comments section. I'm quite quite quick at replying if I have the time. Um, if they're like I said, if they are not deemed as competitive um, or might cause a competitive product, I will try and add them for you and. That's pretty much it. If you like the video, you know, hit hit the thumbs up. Um, I'm quite a small channel, so it does make make a considerable difference. If this is the first time you've actually watched one of my videos, um, I will leave the playlist for the first version of the antivirus 
at the end. Um, if you are a new new uh, viewer, hit the subscribe button. Uh, we do try and cover a lot of things. Um, oh, this this is also something I forgot to mention. We will be covering malware analysation at some point. Um, I see it as a necessary point. Um, in the first video, in the first block of videos, um, the antivirus was simple enough that you could just add MD5s to it. Um, and that was enough. Um, in this video, I will be, you know, in this series, because I will make a playlist when I upload this, so that you can follow along easier. Um, we will be doing malware analysation um, which includes signature we'll, I will do probably one or two maybe episodes on making signatures and what makes a good signature and what makes a bad signature um, we might do a, an episode on false positives but um, it all depends on how well it goes and how how well the video gets how many views it gets because at the end of the day, I don't want to make content which no one really wants to watch. So, um, yeah, comment below. If you enjoyed the video, you know where the thumbs up button. And I will see you guys on February, 9, uh, February 11th for the first video of this, if you're only following this. And if not, I'll have another video um, over the weekend and check it out.